Uh, it's Ebro in the morning. Look, man, uh, you've seen his face. Uh, Laura Styles is here. Uh, you know his brother and, and uh, their endeavors musically for a long time, but now there's a new endeavor. I want y'all to give it up for Chris Gotti on the program right okay, now. Okay. Yo, y'all better, yo, yo, better clap for him. He keeps people safe in this tent. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, now uh, I want to get to the new endeavor first. Yes. People know your name, but they never really get to see you talk. And I'm I'm honored that you want to come up and, and talk Man, on this it's program. It's a pleasure to have you having me up here, Laura. I appreciate this so much. Yeah, and I, cause I, you know, um, damn. All right, first, new endeavor right now. It's a website and you're helping, and you're and it, and it's a it's a whole business, but it's marketing, it's promotion for new artists, and you're trying to help people empower themselves if they're new it's artists. It's a digital distribution label. Is that it, what it is? Not a label. I okay. don't want to be called a record label. I'm almost anti-label because I'm not owning any masters. I'm not taking no 360s. You're no not publishing. signing anyone to a deal. I'm signing them to to the use of my platform. Okay. That's it. The digital distribution platform that I created with all these services that any major record label could provide. I could provide, but without the the you know being caught up in a in a long contract and all these 360s. Absolutely, the only thing that I do is I don't, I'm a person Ebro you know me long time I'm a person that I don't want to be used I never ask people for anything but you're not going to use me so you're not going to take my 30 year relationships that I've built in my career in history that I'm basically empowering you with when you come to this label to just take that and then disappear because you get popping so what I did is inside of my contract I just put I'll take a 10% override if you do do that so you're like no an, hard you're feelings. almost like a, you're almost like a okay it's it's a it's a almost like a partnership in a way, right? Where you have the infrastructure, someone else has the content, they bring it to you, and then you take ten percent of all the transactions. Well, as it's, it's different than that, and you're using trigger words for me. Partnership. I'm not your partner. This is it. your business. This is ah. not my business. All right. You own it one hundred percent. What I'm doing is I created a platform so you could utilize all these different services, and I'm dealing. I created this for the lowest level. So they're paying you a fee for the services. I don't get it from the artists. I get it from my service providers. Got Big it. difference. So what I'm doing is taking my relationships. Let's say you're a marketing uh, soul G's here. Let's say uh, PR service, okay? Mm -hmm. I could get him at a discounted price for you because you're coming through me. Mm -hmm. And I'm passing that discount on to the artist. Then the artist, I don't get paid from the artist. I get paid from Soul G. So the artist pays Soul G I and take Soul a G. percentage of Soul G's oh, money. Oh, I it. see. Soul okay. G, if y'all don't know, is yeah. a big uh, famous PR person. People like Ice-T, Coco, he's got <laughs> Busta Rhymes. Damn, you done brought mad people through here. I'm I know. Nice All right, so, can, um, can, I, can we talk about some of the services, though? Can you absolutely. explain and break it down to absolutely. me? Absolutely. So right now, uh, I'm dealing with... Uh, I'm, let me give you why it's on the site, how it's structured. Mm -hmm. So on the site, I put up only a few services. And then I have in big bold letters, if a service is missing, click here. Because then you could ask me like, hey, I want this X, Y, Z. And I'll say, okay, I know how to do that. And my team will figure out exactly who to go to. But I may have not have, let's say, locked in that contract with my service provider yet. Okay. So I don't want to put it on the site from a legal standpoint until I get my contract. So All my service providers have a contract with me. Okay. And I take that business almost like a lease, like I'm leasing an apartment, basically. You know, it's a whole new different concept. There's nothing like it out here that I've ever seen. This isn't new for me. This is something that I've been thinking about for years based on me and my brother's history in music, dealing with the CEOs of this company, that company, and why... Is so needed for artists today. And for the people watching and listening, this is Chris Gotti. This is Irv Gotti's brother. Absolutely. And uh, she, one Irv of the, Gotti, what up? What up, Irv? <laughs> and one of the founding uh, players in that whole Murder, Inc. franchise, as well as many other endeavors that you were responsible for bringing Absolutely. to Def Jam and other labels back in the 90s. Absolutely. We, you know, I've I always had a vision for my brother. This is my younger brother. He's three years younger than me. I've raised him since we was forever. We have... We're peanut butter and jelly, stick and thin. I never fought with him like typically older brothers do with younger brothers. We never argue. We're, we do, we're, we call ourselves the Malachi brothers. Right. If I don't get you, he will and vice versa. And uh, we just worked from there. I helped, helped him put everything together. I would always fester all the talent to him because I knew his genius is just different. And I know it's my brother, but I don't know anyone like Irv Gotti. 
Mm. You know, my brother Irv Lorenzo. You know what I'm saying? I don't know anyone like him in the in this space at all. So when I look at his genius, it's like I just need to help him with things, and that's what I did. So I took care of business. He's creative. He's out there doing what he do, and we just. We had a hell of and, a time. And you, <laughs> but you have a history of, you always hold held Irv down as well as many other people from your neighborhood. Oh, my, I'm my big brother. I'm big brother. I just like peace. I don't want to deal with none of the, like I stopped a lot of problems with other people, you know. I well, would always I, I would always say that Chris Gotti's the guy that's like, look, man, if you in the street business, leave street business in the street. When, Absolutely. If you ain't about that and you want to be creative and do business the right way, then Chris will fuck with you. You know, I look at myself, uh, I'm blessed. I look at myself as a very unique individual because uh, I could go pretty much anywhere. Everyone knows me. I, I, I did business in one way, shape, or form with people trying to help them in communities. I dealt with all the inner cities across the country, not just New York, not just Brownsville, mm. you know what I'm saying? Not just Hollis, where I'm from. And I help everybody when I see it. And I do it on a one-to-one -one marketing type of thing where I'm in your face directly. You're not dealing with someone else. If I'm going to invest my money and time, I do it. Okay, let's talk about money, though. Um, okay. After, you know, the murdering <laughs> thing was a massive thing. Yes. And you guys, you know, the whole, everyone watched how it played out when things crumbled. Yes. Right? Um, and you guys were being indicted. It was a heavy thing. And they strung y'all across the coals for a long time trying to get every dollar y'all had made. Trying to Absolutely. say that y'all had did it the wrong way. Shout out to the government. They did a hell of a job. <laughs> and, and, what do you mean when you say that? Uh, you know, in, in my opinion, so from all the knowledge that I have from going through the trial. I mean, I went through every process you could imagine. I was really my attorney with Gerald Chagall, who is the absolute best defense attorney in the game. Uh, and I watched the way the government is very strategic in their approach of how they prosecute people. The reason their 98% conviction rate is they're very detailed in their attack. And they're not coming for you unless they sure they can get you. And they go after your resources, so they cut off all our resources. So right. imagine we was very ignorant, me and my brother didn't realize we wasn't doing anything wrong. We're like, this is gonna blow over, it's nothing. And here goes one year, two years, no money coming in, and we're just keeping everyone going, keeping spending our own money. And three years go by and we're like, wait a minute, <laughs> something's wrong. And at this point, <laughs> had people stopped doing business with absolutely. What you got? They didn't want to be associated because of the Karen other. Herein lies Adventures Music because this is where the birth of that was. When I realized how many billions of dollars we generated for the businesses that we was dealing with, and when we had a little inkling of trouble, which was no trouble, it was I didn't turn my back on a friend, and that's what the government didn't understand. How could these two guys making all this money not? turn their back when we're saying just leave this guy alone and we'll let you get we'll we'll leave you alone and we're like he didn't do nothing wrong i'm not going to tell you a story that i don't even know yet alone on a friend of mine you are you crazy yeah. i could get into the stories how much he helped me which i told the government i said this guy only helped and when you say this guy i'm talking about kin of supreme mcgriff my brother mm. who's still my friend who i still take care of to this day that right. still calls me and That's i would right. never just turn my back on and this is someone that i didn't know in the 80s in his heyday i knew of him we met just like any friend would meet and how y'all from the same neighborhood well he's from oh, south side Southside, we're all yeah. in queens but That's like right. i said his name rang bells and he was one of those guys and he met us on a video shoot you know, I could get into the story of how when Irv first met him, he called me because he was like, I don't know what's going to happen because we're from Hollis, Hollis, Queens. So all my adolescent life, I was against dudes from Southside. Southside yeah. It was just the, what's that, Hatfield and McCoy's, yeah, you know what I'm saying? it was just something to do as if young you're from men. there, we're from here. <laughs> it wasn't about I knew you or why we're beefing. We just beefed. <laughs> and, you know, I fought pretty much every day damn near in my high school years with someone from Southside. They wait at the bus for you because my RQ2 bus that goes to Hollis <laughs> is right in the middle of Southside on Jamaica <laughs> Avenue. So, and if you didn't get on it, everyone from Hollis was waiting for you because you didn't get on the Q2. We're going to fuck. Oops, yeah. Excuse no, me. I got you. I We're going to get you yeah. when you get off the bus. <laughs> Why wasn't you on that Q2? So, it was a whole thing. And it was like, that's my breeding ground. So, it's how I was raised. It's no, it's again. But he saw, he, he saw you guys doing positive things. Absolutely. He asked, his first question was, can we shoot a movie? Right. That's what his first question was. Can He asked Irv, can you shoot a movie? 
And Irv told him, I can barely shoot videos at the time. We was doing Cash Money Click with uh, TVT Records right. on uh, Guy Brewer uh, in one of his shops at the time. He was in the halfway house, but he was there, mm -hmm. and he spoke to Irv. And it just grew from there. He didn't say nothing about no street stuff. He was asking about music stuff, business. Right. And then, and, I, and then you know that we that's the that story of people who come from neighborhoods where they had to make decisions that the that could jeopardize the rest of their life, right? Whether they opted hey, bro, to be drugs or whatever. But that story of where they reach out to a young person and say, "Yo, <laughs> I didn't do it the right way. You're doing it the right way. I just want to make sure that you're successful." And I've heard that story a number of times where they want to twist that into somehow using resources to illegal resources to further yourself. Well, that wasn't the case. First of all, he did 12 years when we met him. He was in the halfway house. Excuse me. And um, After you met him? When I, Yeah, when we met him, we met him in 90, he was like, I believe, 94, 95. Mm -hmm. uh, and he didn't have the same power right. financially from when he was, when he was supreme, supreme. Right. He came home and he was just like anyone else that goes away and comes home. They're not the same person. That's right. It's not like things we're sitting change. There. <laughs> things changed, and that's where he was at. But he also had a brain. This guy was very smart, and then he was, I guess, he seen something in Irv and myself, and was like talking to us about music and can we help with this and that. He owned the rights to a book, uh, Crime Partners. And guess what? He made the, the DVD. He made his dream or vision come true. Not just from us. Jay-Z helped. DMX helped. Rough Riders. Everyone participated. Snoop Dogg. You're like Everyone, Ice-T, participated in helping this guy, Kenneth Supreme McGriff, to get access or the ability to make this come true. And make come his dream life. come true. The, you know, the, the DVD came out and made over $6 million and the government took it. Mm. So that could have changed his life. This is something that people don't understand. It's like that would have made him right on the straight and narrow, right from there, in the game. He had a he got a million dollars from Def Jam because he had a soundtrack. He had every song from every hot artist at the time. Because people wanted to show love. People's paying homage, yes. And guess what? That wasn't because of me and Irv. That's because of who he was. For, forgive me for being naive, but why, why would the government take it all back? Because they wanted to say it happened because of his drug influence and the things that he had done in the past. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So they tied even, you know, a lot of times that's how they make sure that you can't integrate back into society is they keep you under their thumb and, and watch anyone that you interact with. So it's almost like you made a decision to try to better yourself and you did it illegally and they don't want to allow other people to benefit from something they thought was bad ever right, right, right. In, 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 in generations to come. You know, I don't want to harp on it, but one of the ways they look at it, and I spoke to several agents while I was under this whole process or investigation and in trial, uh, they look at it as fish to water. Yeah. So they take you, you, you if you're in the, if basically saying if you're a criminal, you will be a criminal. Just let me put you back in the environment mm. and you're going to, we'll get you then. Mm. And that's what they, and then they didn't want us to make him legitimate and be out of that fish to water scenario. He was the one that got away to them. Everyone in his era at that time in the eighties was either locked up or dead. And they told me so they had in my dead. house, he's going to be the same. And if you don't listen, you'll be with him on his, next to him. This is the way they was positioning everything. But again, we never talk about it, and I don't want to harp on it yeah, now. Nah, I like mean, I said, shout out to the government. You understand? Yeah. I understand their philosophies and thinking because they didn't understand rap music. They didn't understand how could these guys make this money in this business. We need to know more about it. So when I really get into it, and believe me, this is not me guessing. This is from years of studying and the moves that they made. I believe that it's uh, it came from a hierarchy, meaning a senator, a governor, or a president, to put down that agenda, mandate, find out about rap music, and Murder Inc. Perfect but that's name, been forever. Irv Gotti, Chris, Chris. Now we have Supreme Kenneth McGriff, for ex Kingpin. Perfect scenario. Let's go get it. But in that rap game, without saying anything, every hip hop artist has that next to them in that era. If you understand yeah, what I'm no. saying, without saying any names, but or it goes all, but it goes all the way back to C. Dolores. Remember the C. Dolores Tucker Absolutely. and the parental advisory sticker, and it goes back even farther <clears throat> than that. Where they didn't ever 
want or expect or expect <laughs> the popularity of the stories of the low income downtrodden broken black male to become popular in mainstream <laughs> and media. that's what we are we control popular music that's right and they listen the hip-hop to this culture has influenced the world in more ways than anything that you could even come uh, talk about but it, that but that story right the story of how that happened G flies in the face of what they would prefer the descendants of the people that were oppressed to be, <clears throat> so right? Because when it, it, it didn't happen the I way love they these wanted, words you're using. they didn't. They, <laughs> it didn't happen the way they wanted it to happen. It happened the way we wanted it to happen. So right? that, that oppression is in music, also. I'm gonna tie it right into adventures because I'm, I'm of very, course you are, of course I'm, you are. But I'm very passionate about this, Ebro. This isn't something that, like I said, this isn't overnight. I'm not a hustler. Yeah. I'm not trying to scam somebody. I always help you. Check my history. I always help people out. Uh, and I'm really trying to find the best way in this day and age for music to empower artists. Own your music. Don't give it away. When uh, You could go 10 years back or longer. I don't want to give you exact numbers, but I could give it to you. But let's just use 10 years. When is the last time a record label, a major record label, took an artist that isn't already buzzing or have a record and made them in a star? Give me one. Here we are on Hip Hot, uh, hot 97. Yeah. No, you give me one. It's been a long time. You give me one and you anything. can't do it. So then when you say that, so, and, and for so the why audience, is that? But you for the audience, ask, why? For, Chris, for the audience, when you say a record label turning someone into a star. Yes. There was a time. That's when, what we did. Right. There was a time when there were, they even had black music departments. Absolutely. That, How about demo label, deals? Right. Where they would give you, a well, they have them now, development, development deals. Development deals. Where they would actually invest in you. But they're and, only doing that when you're already moving because they want to own that intellectual property, that right. music, that record that you make. And once they own that, they would invest. But they already have a metric of figuring out what's that worth. Mm. You just, as an artist, don't understand how they get to that number. Why did you get 250000 they know they're going to make it over X amount of time regardless of what you do. This is a time business. We count pennies. They know how to count pennies. I know how to count pennies. That's what I learned. I didn't go to school. I learned the hard way. I, I, I was robbed basically by labels and see the mistakes. Got lawyers that robbed me, seen the mistakes and right. kept moving. I tell artists all the time, you want to do something, go make a mistake, learn something. I didn't, I'm no different. I learned from that. That's why I don't want to feel used. And so this adventures um, endeavor is a way for you to empower artists, mm -hmm. and basically you're taking a, a brokerage fee, if you will, yeah. for helping them use services that you have at your disposal. Absolutely. I'm going to create a network of not just artists, but their followers inside of adventures where I'm going to be able to move the needle anytime I drop music. And I'm going to be dropping lots of music. I already have over 30 releases already, and I didn't even start yet. And I'm telling you, this is something that will turn into, I mean, a monster. So there's when people say that, they're going to say, well, how could you do that many? You can't. It's a, it's a bandwidth issue. And I know those are my challenges. My challenges really is if I have an artist at the lowest form, I give every artist what I'm doing is uh, giving them the ability to be seen and heard by as many people as possible at their whatever their resource level is, right? So at, with, with money, I could do it just like a universal. If you have no money, that's the real challenge. How can I get how your do you, record How out? do you filter these artists, though? I don't. It's your business. It's so not let's say my I business. come in, I have 500 followers, I'm an amazing singer, right? But I have, I have no... no. Sign um, up, adventuresmusic.com. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so you, you will, you will, will you guide me, though? Because what if I'm clueless? I'm like, okay, I don't know how to put so something on So basically, I'm YouTube, playing... The, I, I love these questions because that's basically I'm playing your advisor slash consultant. Right. Okay. And for that, for that, all I'm doing is saying when you come to me, I have a team of people that will say, "This is what you want," but it's your resources because I don't pay for your business. I don't own it. No one pays for your business if they don't own it. So I don't own your business. You have to figure it out. And I'm doing it at the most modest levels. So, so a win for me is just delivering on. If I said I could do you and get you on a platform where you're going to be seen by five million people, that's what I did. That's a win. You, it's a no loss. Every artist that signs to me can leave whenever they want. Mm. It's no, again, I'm not locking you in. But they're not to a, signing to a label, you said. It's not a label. It's they're a digital signing, distribution platform. The, the agreement is for you to help them with certain services that you offer. That Exactly. That they can maybe not get. I You know, there's other companies out there. TuneCore, uh, CD Baby, which I tried to buy. I tried to buy CD Baby over six years ago. Me and a guy named Jeff Arnold. Jeff Arnold owned 
and created a company called WebMD. Yeah. Sold it for like eight billion. <laughs> he he was a working small for little website. Smart little website. I, I I'm, launched it. I'm very familiar with it. So one of the other businesses you said other things that I did. We used to own a company called Lidrock. So Lid Rock. I remember Lid Rock with the little CD. The, and the little lid. mini yeah. CD on top. That was me and Jeff Arnold. I helped him launch. If you go back to Ashanti's video, Rain On Me, that was the launch of Lid Rock. So we put that in there. We spent $900,000 on the video from Lid Rock. We bought the first Maybach into the country for that. And I birthed Lid Rock from that business. We was doing 4 million CDs a month. We were selling them to Sabaros, Kentucky Fried yeah. Chicken, uh, everything. So you would walk in to you know, get your meal and you would get a, a lid on your soda that had a mini CD. A in. mini disc on the top. And it had your favorite artist's single and maybe a video, like exclusive content on that scene. And they sold it for an additional dollar. We was making 45 cents on every sale. Mm. of, And it was non-refundable, which was beautiful because we're in the record business. If I ship... Back then, if I shipped Tower Records, 100,000 records, and we only sold 50,000, it cost me more to get the 50,000 back. So you lost money. Than to send it. And yeah, it would kill me. So we had to get very strategic. You know, they started coming down with the exact met metrics so we didn't lose money. But at the end of the day, that was a bad part of the business. We made it where it was, you bought 100,000 CDs, it's yours. We don't want to hear about it. So um, Chris Gotti, um, you had a, have made a lot of money in your life. Yes. Uh, much of it, though, contrary to popular belief, did not come from the music business. Absolutely. Are you do, Phil you know, Ivy? Shout out to Phil <laughs> Ivy, my best, one of my gonna. best people in the game. Baby. <laughs> For people who don't know, <laughs> I, don't, Phil, I don't know who that is. Great, they I don't know. It. They don't know what that is. Would you? Explain? He's quiet money. Phil Ivy's the best. He's the he's looked at as the best poker player in the world. People don't even realize you could manage a poker player. I've managed Phil Ivy for almost 13 years now. And uh, when I say he's my best client, he's my best client. But he's the biggest gambler in the world. Like, there's no bet he wouldn't do. You know, like... Can it, we tell the story or is that story not for the airwaves? Which story? You, with the with the game? With the... Yeah, with the, with the casino and Well, the he whole. beat a casino out of like 14, $12 million. He had put in $2 million himself, but beat him out of $14 million because he found an advantage, uh, a flaw in the playing card. Like when you under, when if you understand Phil Ivy, he finds advantages in anything he does from a gambling standpoint. So he found a flaw in the playing card and was able to manipulate how that game gets played out. Where instead of being a point oh two percent dog underdog to lose to the house, he became a twenty four percent favorite to beat the house. So literally, he could have just sat there all day and night and closed Clean the up. doors on the house. <laughs> It's just a matter of time. When you understand math and how that game works, it's just time. Casinos will do anything for you as long as you give them time because you cannot beat them in time. But at any Sounds point, like the government. Oh, yeah. Well, government is your partner. So people just got to understand that is my silent partner, and you're fine with that. You Once you come to grips with that, that's what it is. Because they're going to get their money. They're getting theirs, and that's no problem. That's my partner. You know, they're silent. They don't They don't make a decision on what you do, but they are your partner for all intents and purposes. You just got to take it, in, it for what it is. It is we're living, we live in the best country in the world, period. That's the cost of living in the best country in the world. So accept that, and then you're fine. Again, get, shout get out to the government. Get over that. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Gotti, man. Um, Adventures is the name of the new company. It's adventures.com. Yeah, Adventures Music. And it's ADD because I'm putting ventures together. So I'm adding ventures together. Adventuresmusic.com. Adventures this is really music. interesting because you know how many times we get people here? Um, even like Vine Sensations or, or people who are like. They're perfect they're for like adventures. 30. All you Vine Sensations yeah, no, come out. Like, yeah, 34,000 followers on Twitter or on, on your Instagram. your business. And they don't know what Ebro, it is I'm to get beast. PR. <laughs> but that's perfect for them. <laughs> All right, so Chris, um, I want to also too reconcile something with you before you get out of here. Look, it made it sound like what you were saying was anti-record label, and you have a lot of friends. Holla. You have a lot of friends inside record labels. Absolutely. And but you know what? I I'll say this without getting into details. They know it just like I do. Because it's a, it's a part they of their know, business and their hustle. They and here's one of the things: if they tried to give away their intellectual property, they would never do it because that's their premise of their entire business model hot 97 would never do it never but that's where the game is at now yeah it's about individual yeah, your, ownership your ip when you hear people say your intellectual IP, property now with social media yeah. your brand is actually your facebook page absolutely your IG, that's your, your twitter that's your ip you now. don't want to mm -hmm. give that up who wants to give that up 
It has value on it. It has a value. They just don't know how to monetize. That's right. So what I'm going to do is show them how to monetize that. Yo, I need 10% of your 10% for just selling that. Holla. (laughs) Ebro, come on. I told you when I was at Soho House with you, I need you. Because here's what I need. I need resident experts like yourself Mm. in every part of the business. So when these artists come in, they're talking to someone that absolutely knows exactly what's going on let me let's talk about some other people that you came up at the exact same time and you was making millions when they was making sure millions. sure um jay-z yes you guys Hope. had holla holla was moving yeah then can i get a was on the uh rush hour soundtrack yeah now, was that can i get a was a ja rule record yes that featured jay-z absolutely but it took jay-z to another place well, it, at the time well it was a big record so nationally nationally yeah. it, it gave him a different market probably because it was a different type of record it crossed over where jay wasn't probably playing in those markets again it was just a great record jay heard it and wanted it yeah. and irv gave it to him like irv was like jay that's john's record like that's his single like you want now, now jay moved like that was his he 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 it was his he took it <laughs> 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 Shout out to Rock Nation. <laughs> Yo, Tata, I told you it's no longer lay down or get down, man. I'm telling you, man. Take it easy. Let me breathe, man. Yeah, why they put pressure on you, man? <laughs> no, they want everything. <laughs> no, they want ev- Yo, Rock Nation wants everything. Listen, they, they want everything. They want everything. And you don't and you make no qualms about the business yourself because you respect the game, I guess. And so there's no the you you want to see Hov and them get as much you as know, they can cuz you want to get as much as You know, as you I try can. to tell everyone I deal with, take the situation, don't make excuses. I hate excuses. Stop making excuses and just do something. If you change is about knowing the the game you're in, figuring it out and beating the players that are involved in that game. That's right. Find your advantage. Find your advantage. Everyone is special, has a unique skill set. You have to take that and use it. And I try to explain that to our, like I, I don't think there's another executive at my level that talks to the amount of dudes I talk to. Well, because they don't really move in the street anymore. You go on my thing, people DM me all the time. You know what I do? Hit them back and say, call me at night when I'm free. 11 o'clock, 12. All jokes aside, I talk to everybody at my rate. I'm not going to let you improve. Uh, like, if I'm busy, I'm telling you I'm busy. Understand that. But when I'm free and you guys, I give you the time. I do I do Dykeman Park. We're at 25th year anniversary. Mm. So that's we one. We up there this year again. That's right. Five, I nine, know. seven will be in the park. I know. Well, you know what I'm saying? They, they in there. Trust me. I love it. Uh, so this year I'm going to give away uh, digital distribution. Every I'm going to let Kenny, the, the, the CEO of the park, Kenny is his park. I've been working with Kenny for years now over 10 years at that dykeman park uh, you know i work with greg shout out to greg over at Rutgers. he's no ebc greg Marius. ebc that's my we'll man. be over there too i'll be over there too you know what i'm saying exactly because it's really for the community for that's the right. hood and i bring in celebrities i bring in uh, basketball players every year that's me giving back to the community and i make them sign autographs and come in and deal with the kids that's what it's about for me like at the end of the day i'm gonna i got so many people i just want to see and educate people because I feel like I'm that kid in that hood where I grew up. The first person to help me was Jam Master J. He used to put me up, pick me up, put me in his car, and talk to me. And I was like 17, 18, but hold, holding him down still. Right. He would come and make me come hold me down. I'll go to 10, 18 at 18 years old. You know what I'm saying? Going to meeting everybody you could imagine. You know what I'm saying? But Jay is one um, oh, with, with Chris. He showed a lot of love to kids in Queens, man. God bless the dead. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that, he was actually the first one, but I didn't have no one else that came to me and talked to me about anything. So it's like I just learned on my own. I just, the hard way. Irv used to complain because they used to take music. <laughs> they used to take music and we'd be like, yo, that's our record. And I used to tell Irv, don't worry about it. That lets me know we could do it. You know what I'm saying? That we're qualified to right. get there because these guys are at number one, and they and they go, and, and they, they come, come and take from taking you. our in our basement. Irv be in the basement, chefing it up, come and hear it, and they take the cassette, <laughs> take it to the studio, remix it, absolutely, and put it out, absolutely, and not and you give y'all zero credit. All good though, 
no no ill so will. what do you say to young people now who think they deserve credit for every little thing that they do and they feel like they're getting taken advantage of and look you hear stories from Kanye West you hear stories from Hov you hear stories from what you just told you know, uh, so many the, artists that came up Diddy even when absolutely. someone took their creation I love, and it I love those them. stories because Diddy everyone you mentioned they all paid their dues and it's like you learn from those mistakes but kids now don't want to pay their dues well that's what they're going to learn there's no getting around it there's no shortcut to success mm. just think I'll give you another thing give me all the number one rec all the uh one hit wonders i don't want to name no one you tell me who's still here it's simple they're gone they're not relevant they're no because they didn't have that foundation so the minute you just want to jump up there that's the biggest challenge to stay there they don't understand the powers that be won't it's accept harder to stay there than you're a radio there. you're a radio ebro how hard is it for artists once they go number one to stay at number one it's, it's, you don't want a record if it's just a regular record from no. them especially if they're a new artist if you're talking about hove who has history that's different he could do whatever the hell he wants it's hove but when you're talking about new they don't want that this station doesn't want that no well, because it's not, you know, a lot of people understand, you know, we put a record on, you know, we're giving you that moment of time, right? We go back to intellectual property. That logo, it's like the NFL, right? The NFL, if they're going to put you on the field, you're going to get TV ratings. You're going to sell some tickets, right? You're going to keep people interested because they want people to stay interested in the brand. Absolutely. If you're not interesting or you don't have something, like I tell artists all the time, you can have a great song, but if nobody gives a fuck about you. You got to make that story. What's the story about you? Mm. And this is business. It's marketing, really, when you get down to it. We're mar you're marketing yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you tell that story, you got to be creative. It got to be special. got to be different than what's out there in the landscape right now. I consider it like the Autobahn. I keep telling artists all the time, I said, think you were in the Autobahn and we're on the, the track. How are you gonna take over that lane if, it's, if someone's in front of you? And if you're coming out with something totally different, you gotta create your own lane. So that's the way I look at music. It's like, that's the only way to win. So a lot of people, most people are copycats. Right, this business is full of copycats. Mm -hmm. oh, and you know, contrary to popular belief, it always has been. <laughs> always, but it, you know, so you could be a copycat and win. You know what I'm saying? A copycat could take over a style, a, a, a sound, and do it better than what's existing. Aaron Hall and, and R. Kelly. That's you know right. what I'm saying? I don't want to get into it. It well, could be. It Charlie could be, Wilson, Aaron Hall, R. Kelly. You know, it was really the trajectory. Trey Songs uh, slid in there on the R. Kelly know, I don't thing wanna, and then developed his Absolutely. Own thing. I just don't want to get into the, all of the names shouting out. You know what I'm saying? With everyone. But that's what goes on. You know what I'm saying? And then if you could take that audience and that fan, you could become that star that they was and do it bigger and better than they did. And that's what happens in the game. So it's those are the, like the only ways you could fit in in this business. You either got to do that, take over someone's spot, or you have to create your own. It's no other lane for you. It's that's Those are the two choices. And you got to figure out as an artist, creatively, marketing-wise, how you're going to do that. Mm. His name is Chris Gotti. He's worked behind the scenes. It took us a lot to get him up and actually talk on the microphone. It sure did. <laughs> this makes you uncomfortable. You don't it like sure this. Did. You don't like being in I, front. Absolutely. Let me tell you something. So uh, NYU wants me to do a class over there and talk, and I've been turning it down for like three years now. Why? Because I don't want to be in that setting. I, I'm so much more comfortable. Like Ebro and me, we have a great relationship. Mm. Yeah, so I could come up here and talk easy, no problem. So it's, I'm not uncomfortable at all. And it's just certain settings I always, I never wanted to do, but I'm turning the corner. Baruch wants me to come and do a class. Well, I think also, too, because leadership is an issue, right? Uh -huh. So um, Knowledge and, and in not, this changing business that we're talking change about. Change it fast. And another thing is, too, young people are looking for someone to give them the truth. There's so much information Holla. now. There's so much information now that yeah. people don't know what's real and what's not Absolutely. real. And then there's a lot of people talking that wasn't a part of the game, yeah. right? So, you know, a lot of times we tell stories here and because it's not the popular story that everybody wants it to be or it's not as interesting as they thought it was and it's a business and we're saying, here's how this really happened in the 90s. Right. Here's why this isn't happening anymore. But I think that's why it's important for him to do stuff like that. But no, that's my point. Like is they I, need I, to feel, I feel more and more obligated to actually talk now like as I'm going through this now not just because of adventure it's like timing is everything uh, it's just the right time for me right. to actually step forward and start speaking because I know my input my value there's a place for it and needed especially at that level when we're starting at the bottom because yeah. that's where it's starting and when you look at the this game this music business it's more and more artists that are out here than ever before 
and they keep saying the music game is shrink, shrinking when I tell you ASCAP for the first year last year made over a billion dollars for the first time no, ever. Record labels are shrinking. The music yes. business it's is not growing. Shrinking. It's growing. Right. And that's and the, and the way to monetize it is actually growing with streams and different. Look at title. Yeah. Shout out to Jay Z. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now why? <laughs> and, and now a lot of people give Jay Z some negative press on that. You don't. Obviously, we know why. No. I, I mean, listen. I tweeted. No. I said, look, hip hop. That's and, just ignorance. But hip hop and black. All the powers that be. Right. Hip hop <laughs> and black music have tried to take control of distribution for some time. Yeah. And Jay Z is with this title thing is has taken control of distributing content in a way to um, obviously further his business endeavors, but also help other artists. And the backlash that's coming on is obviously from people saying it's too expensive and, you know, they didn't want to see artists get up there that already are millionaires talking about they not getting a fair shake. And so there was a lot of that misunderstanding. Why do you shout it out? I, I need Jay to holler at me. <laughs> he has a great platform and he needs a real salesman out there aside from himself because his voice it's almost too big and it's almost tainted because it's his. It's like you can't speak about what's yours. So like he's doing this concert, but if you put it in perspective and what you're going to get in return for the cost, it's worth it. And that's the bottom line. And But I don't think they're translating that to the audiences because people are looking at dollars and cents. Yeah, that's all they understand. They only understand. If you ask me for $25. $10 over there, yeah, that's 25 all they over that's here. All they why know. am I going over there? Yeah. That's all they know. The reality is it just needs to be explained why better and it's not being explained better. It's just saying, based on, it almost feels like from a consumer standpoint, it's Jay-Z, it's Beyonce, it's all of these artists. And they're that's not why. broke and they're asking for more money. And that's why yeah, you should mess with me. And nice. that's not enough to make the real move. And I don't know their numbers. I don't. Yeah, like I said, but whatever he does, that's my brother. I'm supporting. But at the end of the day, right is right, wrong is wrong. If Irv did something wrong, I'm the first to say, nah, that's not right. And I'll and I'll go out and say it if it's right. And when he's right, I tell him, great, that's a monster idea. This, but I, I just give it straight. I don't know no other way. It's just what he's doing is a great platform. It's great to see that he's now owning something like that. And he deserves it. And what it needs to be explained better for the the lesser, you know, the people that's really that twenty five dollars means something. They got to understand why it's worth it because they're getting X Y Z better. And then they'll say, Oh, now I get why it's twenty five bucks. Right. You know what I'm saying? Opposed to ten, because what he's doing is crushing Spotify. You, you know, mean as far as quality, as far as quality and and content. It's not even close, but he has to very give you. you almost, and it's also time in the game. You got a spoon. It's feed. brand new, it's and you're gonna get new. you're gonna get pushed back. It's the powers that be. They they they're, they're clutching on dying things that need to be in the. I keep telling them these guys are dinosaurs. They need to be in the, a museum, because that's where you put dinosaurs. You yeah. go and view them and say, man, look at the history they got. Great, they was really doing that back then. It's over though. It's over. It's a new day, and they got it. But they're holding on, and I don't. I don't uh, disagree with them for holding on because if I was in their position, I'd do the same thing. You want to make it last as long as you can. But they also know they have to transition. But how can they give up what they... What they've been making a gazillion dollars forever. Yeah. Forever. I a lot in this interview. No, <laughs> that's yes. what I'm doing. So yes, I educate. Amazing. I'm so here to educate more. because in order to make change, just like Jay-Z, you have to educate. So everyone's mindset is one way. You can't just tell them it's something else. You can't just tell them it's something else. You got to show them. You got to educate them why it should be something else. Yeah. And until you do that, you're going to have a hard time. So my job right now is education. Reconcile for everyone watching and listening. Um, kind of go back. Um, a lot of people turn their back on Murder Inc. Y'all got pushed out of the building. They took your office. You I, couldn't I, go into the. You couldn't use your key card no more. Like all that, <laughs> y'all was out on the street. But none of those individuals at that time, at that time when shit got hot for y'all, none of those individuals. You got. You don't have a problem. You charged all that to the game. Listen, I'm blessed. Irv is blessed. You know, we we're men first. We walk through. We stand up. We're men. Period. It's no easy way to explain that. Like, we, I was raised, Irv was raised a certain way. We're not going to change no matter what the scenario. I'm not going to sit here. But and how do you reconcile that when you know people turn their back? People you made a b billions for, <laughs> all of a sudden, now you, you know, can't it, even go in the building at Def Jam. Again, I'll say, I'm going to use Irv because that's my brother. And I, again, the love for my brothers, you can't explain. So at the end of the day, he's something different than me. 
I know that. One of my biggest challenges in music was always being behind Irv. He knows that also. What do you mean? Challenge. Meaning the minute Irv chose to stop doing music. He chose to, not because we got pushed out. We we was getting things, but the game changed, and he's like, I'm not doing that no more because I don't like that person or I don't want to do business with this or that. Cool. It was a decision. He stopped. So at the end of the day, what I mean by that uh, is when we go out there, it's like when I go into an office with a, I could have the best artist, I could have the best producer, where's your brother? First question. That's a huge shadow I'm walking in. Mm. And I get it. It's like I, I love it. Irv walked in my shadow when we was younger, before Famous. <laughs> yeah, right. It was I, I make jokes all the time because it was, oh, that's Chris' brother. You know what I'm saying? Now that's that's Irv's brother. <laughs> right. But it's I love it. It means I helped him get up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I want to do. I want to help people get up. And so at the end of the day, that was my biggest challenge in music. Anybody I went to, no matter how much they loved the music, as soon as I went to it, they hear the music, love it. So where's your brother at? Irv is doing what he's doing. I'm here. You don't see me standing here. What's wrong? But it was a big challenge because they feel, think about music history. If you go to Puffy and those guys, let's leave Irv, Dr. Dre. Everyone that worked with those guys when they left, they was never as successful. So those executives only know that. They want to know if you're if he's not doing it, then this can't be that great. That's right. That's how their mindset mm -hmm. was. So that was a big challenge. That's the reason I went into sports management, hedge funds, insurance. Shout out to NFP. Insurance. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I own insurance business. <laughs> NFP is the fifth largest brokerage firm in the world, not in the country, in the world. We have over 120 offices throughout the world. Uh, I could do any insurance from your car, house, nothing too big, nothing too small. From your car, your house to... Damn, I insure money. I insure the win casino. That's money for the rest. That money just keeps coming in. That's why I did it. Life. See what you just said? That's why I did it. That money because, doesn't stop. So that was part of my learning curve for when I was dealing with um, the government and everything and how they shut the faucet off on all my revenue streams from universals, all of the record labels. They just made them cooperate. And by them making them cooperate made me see there's no money coming in. I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I went and started other businesses. And I you went. had to diversify your revenue streams. I had to diverse and things they couldn't stop because I have you know deals and this and that, and that's what I did. But you know my insurance business is pretty big, and it's you know Fifth shout out to Steve Stout. I do all the translations insurance. You know I'm coming to see you too, Steve. I got to talk to you. <laughs> Before I get out of here, let's have Vegas talk because I know you were just in Vegas. Absolutely. A lot of people hated shout that out fight. to Floyd. A lot of people hated that. He fight, proved though. why he's TBE. The Life. best fighter in the game couldn't touch him. But why? Period. Why? Why are people so um, adverse to appreciating Floyd's greatness? You know. You know. We, he, we're, they we're, say he runs. They say he don't fight. Me, they say this because we want violence. <laughs> if we could pay to f see two people fight to the death, people might want to pay to see that because we want violence. Floyd is a, the best boxer ever, in my opinion. Like he really. I tell him all the time. He's TBE. He's TBE. He's you know. It's like the best fighter today's time, Pacquiao, in his division, couldn't touch him. How hard is that to stand this close to someone in a, in a certain amount of space and they can't hit you? Like that is, if that is not the ultimate craft and talent and skill. But people don't appreciate boxing like that. And you know is what else what people is? don't understand? How much of a thinking man's, uh, like it's all mental. It's chess. It's all chess in there. And he's the best chess player in that square ring. It's that simple. And it doesn't matter. You, did you ever for a second I didn't but I'll ask you did you ever for a second yes uh, believe that Pacquiao had a chance okay before the fight yes if Floyd starts slow I, I, I told people because people say Chris you was talking Pacquiao I said no I said if Floyd starts slow like he normally does he might have a problem if he starts slow the first three it's, again it's math it's all math three rounds I deal with the best gambler in the world getting all this information and then mm. putting numbers, statistics, stats. So three rounds, give it to Pacquiao, first three rounds. We got nine left. He has to win seven out of nine with a fighter that typically throws a lot of punches. It's very hard to do that. You're going to lose a round or two. You might get a draw. You might lose by a round, even if he does great in the last nine rounds. It's just that unless he knocks him down or knocks him out, which I didn't think he was going to do, because in order to do that, you got to sit down on your punches, and sitting down means you're gonna get hit back. That's right. <laughs> so it's just it's just boxing. I know boxing. You know what I'm saying? I box myself, and uh, I managed, 
you know, a ton of fighters. Are you um, well outside of Floyd? Yeah, fighters that you think are the next. Is hmm. boxing's in trouble? <laughs> it, you really feel? Like I don't see Canelo. the excitement. Canelo. Canelo can't be because Floyd dismantled him. Dismantled. So in everyone's mind, but he's mind, only twenty three, twenty four. But in everyone's mind, he's still that inferior to Floyd. So it's like, yeah, you could be great, but you're being great at the level here where it's like. So at this point, they're in trouble because so nobody Ward, can touch Floyd. Gotti and Ward. Do you know Gotti yeah, and Ward? That Arturo fight Gotti. Three, Arturo yeah. Gotti and and, and uh, oh, yeah. they had three fights and they looked as great as some of the greatest boxing. It was only great because they was all both. They was both here, mediocre fighters. Beating the shit out of each other. That fought like hell, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Beating the shit out of each other. face. Woo. So at the end of the day, it's like, that's what made it a great fight. It was the level of competition, but you put Floyd in there with the best Pacquiao, and it's like this, and it's like, it doesn't make sense. So basically what you're saying, until somebody gets- Pacquiao could do great fights still, because he'll have better competition. So it'll be more exciting. Floyd is almost ready. He needs to almost sit down. And, and really take his TV place in, in history. And just go away. Yeah. I know he's talking about redoing his next fight. Uh, they uh, Pacquiao said his shoulder was out. You know, there's a big thing going on. Yeah, because, a yeah class, is that real? That. Yes. Class action lawsuit. Yes. See, uh, I'll, you I'll, throw you, I'll throw another bone out there for the audience. Again, I deal with so many things and so many people at so many levels. Uh, if you have a ticket and you bet on Pacquiao, come see Josh Dubin. I had dinner with him last night. They have a class action lawsuit. You will get not all your money back, but you will get some money back. I so that's a real thing. It's absolutely real. And that's because Pacquiao did not tell the gamblers that he had an injury. That he had a shoulder injury. Not the gamblers. There's a commission. There's a body, an organized commission that follows up with all these things, and he didn't report an injury. So now all that money, his purse is going to be in jeopardy. You know, his his purse that he that made for the fight. Million. Absolutely. So he's got a problem. It, it, you know, it's smart why as... Didn't, why didn't he come out You know and what's say, crazy? As smart as Bob Aaron's supposed to be, who's the biggest crook in the game. <laughs> Bigger than Don King. Everyone puts Don, but it's so wrong. Aaron did things that's so medieval and wrong to fighters in that game. Way worse than Don King. Just understand that. But here, he's a smart man. He ain't black, though, so... Yeah, he's a Jewish, a Jewish man. But again, you know, again, he gets protected... And they give him the pass. Mm -hmm. He did stuff to Pacquiao that's medieval, like unbelievably, and Pacquiao still with him. So at the end of the day, how did he allow Pacquiao to even come out and say that? Not realizing the ramifications that's going to follow from a legal standpoint. Was that to set up Pacquiao Mayweather too? It doesn't matter. You want to lose your money? Like what? Maybe. Maybe that was a risk they All took. he needed to do was say, I got hurt during the fight, and he's safe. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right, if right. you got hurt during the fight, if you remember Floyd was yanking him down and doing things, if if he said that's when it hurt, I got hurt, he's good. So he admitted to it right after? He admitted right after saying he was hurt before the fight and he just mm -hmm. didn't get the proper testing. He he didn't allow them to do the proper testing and that's going to come back to haunt him. So I have a theory that there's going to be, and it's, I'm probably completely wrong at this point, but I had a theory that you know Mayweather wanted to get to 50 undefeated. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And then sit down. And then stop. The only person that is interesting in the Floyd Mayweather scenario at this point is Pacquiao, unless Absolutely. somebody else comes along. Uh, so you, you know, he could fight. go and fight uh, Amir Khan and knock him out, and that's like a meaningless fight. But it's a paycheck. He'll he'll knock he'll knock he'll stop Khan. He'll he will stop Khan, and that's like okay. You think he would knock Khan out? Yeah, Khan doesn't have a chin. Floyd is going to touch your chin. He's going to touch you, and the, it's the mental pressure. Think, I love Zab Judah. But think of Zab. Zab was one of his best fights as far as challenging. Right. But Zab ran out of gas. It wasn't because he ran out of gas because he didn't train. He ran out of gas because it's mental fatigue. Get in the ring. Fight someone. You understand that mental fatigue. They don't need to punch you to get tired. Just you thinking of them hitting you, you're getting tired. And that pressure constantly <sighs> is what gets you fatigued. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I, I get it, but I don't know if the world understands because they may never been in those situations. But that's what gets right. you tired. Floyd is so comfortable in that ring. So Floyd, uh, Pacquiao Mayweather part two, yes or no? Of course. <laughs> it's money. <laughs> Pacquiao, Pacquiao Mayweather three. No. Only if, only if Pacquiao does something phenomenal. Now, granted, he put pressure on Floyd that fight. He just couldn't hit him. Imagine if he was hitting him with that pressure. Then it might be a different result. So unless that changes, which I can't see, that's the only way I could get to a three. Can this shoulder injury situation uh, stop him from having a, a second fight? 
Well, it depends on his what recovery. The injury is, yeah. You know, when, yeah, how he recovers from the injury, but they got the best surgeon. You know, modern medicine is unbelievable. Like, it's, it's funny because I had an injury uh, when I was young, and I'm it's a butcher job. <laughs> I had the butcher take care of me. <laughs> but the, I look at people that had the same thing with me, and I mean, you don't even see the scar. I got yeah. a huge scar down in my belly. And it's like, yo, who did this to me? <laughs> Listen, I do want you to come back at some point because I know you got some great stories. Absolutely. I want to talk. I want to hear the story again about the most money you lost. <laughs> I want to hear about I your hear gambling stories. Shout out to the government. Yeah. <laughs> the but, but your gambling stories. Stories. I love you guys. Your man. DMX stories are okay. incredible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. His D, yo, his DMX stories are yeah. incredible. You guys had Earl D was good, man. You guys had DMX early, signed early in the game. We Irv used to go pick him up literally out of an abandoned house. You know, the, his story is really amazing. I used to go see him catch him on 125th Street. And just made sure he was able to eat. Do you still keep in touch with him? I don't have a line on him. The hmm. guy is like impossible to keep in touch with him. But my sister uh, does touring overseas and she books stuff. So I, I actually was with DNY just the other day at uh, Carmine's and we ca we had caught up in everything. So, you know, Ray reached out because he's talking about X on Adventures. Right. You know, because this isn't just for new artists. This could be any artist. Adventures music. Adventures music. Ad ad thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, thank you. Adventures Music, two Ds. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's not for just anyone. Like, I, I'm I'm going to get records from everybody and show them because even established artists may not know all of these details because they had someone else doing it for them. Yeah. They relied on that record label all they the time. They had a system. So, you know, with the changing times, actually, I got to holler at Jada because I want a feature from Jada. I have a section on my, on my site for features. When I finish populating that, it's gonna be amazing because it's it's a it's a service that's never been thought of or put out to the world where I'm gonna allow artists of anywhere in the, you know any level to be able to submit their music for a fee to get X art this artist on the, on their track from French Montana like I'm talking to everyone about it to get them to do it whatever their price is is their price that's their brand mm. I can't make them charge less but I, that that access to that artist you could never get. If you're John Doe in Boise, Idaho. Yeah. You understand? And that's something to me that's like a beautiful thing and needed in this day and age. Like, that's where we're at in this game. That's what's up. You know, and then all our, I put stipulations on it. Like, the artist gets to hear the music before they do the feature. They got to like it. I don't tell them I'm clearing your record at a record label because that's a whole nother fee and deal you got to deal with. If they're an independent artist, it's different. You know, and which so a lot of the people watching this and listening to this, don't think just because you can access it, it's easy business. No, this the is a business, grind. You get out of this what you put in. I'm going to have yeah. all these uh, quotes that I love that I love to, that keeps me where, like, one thing is keep it simple, stupid. I use Kiss all the time for myself. Yeah. You know, the, the simplicity, genius is in simplicity. Simplicity, the, you know, when you think of the most genius ideas in the world ever, they was the most simplest idea, and that's why they work so big for so many people. Uh, so I always keep that in the back of my head. The next one of the things is you eat what you kill. That's my hedge fund boys, you know. Shout out to Izzy Englander. <laughs> this guy with the money. This guy with the money <laughs> shout outs, right? Oh, yeah. So listen to me. So <laughs> so yeah. with, with, with that being said, think about that philosophy. You you The work you put in is how come what you're going to, you, you reap what you sow. That's right. So all of these are sayings. If you ever came in my office back in Murder, Inc. days, I had all these sayings up on my walls all the time, like rape and pillage. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. Oh, I still use rape and pillage. I love it. Uh, cut the check. Yeah, these are all, these, you know, I could have trademarked these. That's how long ago I was using them. But it's like, he's just kept me in a certain state of mind. So I want to put it on my site. Just like when you walked in my office and you felt that energy. When you come on my site, I want you to feel that energy That's too. What it is. So, you know, oatmeal is better than no meal. I live by that. You know, people always look for the big check, and it's like, that may not even be realistic. Count your pennies. Count them pennies. Yeah. You know, the richest people, I deal with some of the richest people in the world. 
I dealt with Carlos Slim, who's one of he keeps fluctuating from one to two to three. I have a deal with him out in Mexico. He for, owns the largest cell phone company. Telcel. In, in Telcel. Shout out to Carlos. <laughs> you know, what these I'm saying? guys like shout outs. These billionaires. Absolutely, they love it. They love it. They came to me. Shout so they out were, to Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> and the entire Slim family. <laughs> and the entire Slim family. They own his family owns Yo, every can you text other me, business. Can you text me a name to shout out every day? Of <laughs> yeah, a billionaire. Absolutely. So I get high with the absolutely. billionaire. Absolutely, Mark. Shout out to Mark Lasry. Y'all stop the music and just be like, time for a billionaire shout out. Shout out to Michael <laughs> Gelband and the whole Gelband family. That's who took me to the fight. I went with the Gelbands. And uh, excuse me. And what what they seen with me is how many people knew me from all walks of life, not just hip hop. So they knew that you were an opportunity waiting for them. All they had to do was just figure it out. Yeah, they know I'm very unique because they, they all say they never seen nothing like this from anybody. And these are guys that have been everywhere across the world and back. And they seen everyone, I mean, literally, that was at the fight come up to me say hello from Mark Wahlberg to Brett Ratner. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. It's time for billionaire shout out. <laughs> Holla. No. <laughs> Magic Johnson. <laughs> hey, yo, give it up for Chris Scotty, man. Adventuresmusic.com. Go on, baby. Yeah. Please.